we start the live stream. I don't think that live stream works, but doesn't matter, the recording is on. Welcome everyone to this week's IPLD team sync meeting. It's September the 16th, 2019. As every week, we tell everyone what we're working on and what we do next, and also discuss any open items we have. As every week, I also start with myself. Um, I actually have no clue what I've been working on. So <laughs> I, I've definitely worked on um, the DAG Zebra stuff in Rust, but I actually can't recall anything else. Um, there was probably other stuff as well, but yeah, probably wasn't this important. Um, the, the story about the Zebra stuff in Rust is that the official Zebra library, which is using Surde, which is the um, serializing and deserializing, which is widely used in Rust, doesn't support tags. Um, there is a patch available from Freedom, which adds tags, tags which wouldn't be merged. And I found um, another um, library using Surde for message pack, which I think, so they have a similar thing to tags in Seabor. I think they found a pretty smart way, so I'm currently trying this one um, to see if I can convince the author to perhaps merge my version of it. Um, but I, it's ongoing work, and um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. All right, and um, then next on my list is Eric. I'm um, remembering my week either, but um, so I guess I've been trying to figure out to some extent just playing uh, what's next <laughs> in Cogen. So last week or so, we got the um, proof of concept of like we can handle structs now, the serialization works, no abstraction shattered, thrill, right? Um, so this week, I spent a bunch of time trying to enumerate just all the design choices that we've got coming up about how generated code should look and feel. And so there's a whole bunch of interesting questions going on there. The stuff that's done is basically regarding the, the generic, the monomorphized, the node interfaces that we are pretty used to dealing with. Um, but those still aren't like the end of the story of the ergonomics that we're going to be going for when we have code gen. We will want like the struct field names to have Accessor methods with those matching names and code gen and things like that. So it gets much, much terser in that type checking stuff. And um, so there's just lots and lots of design decisions around that um, for structs, um, especially. There's a ton of it around unions because that is not a concept that Go has natively. It's one that we can hack into it in many different ways, but again, ergonomics questions. So um, Lots more to go there. I've got a document with some decisions outlined, but I think it's probably um, more to discover there before it's time to proceed further on coding. So that and trying to assist with all the other awesome work around Stevens is basically where I've been. I think that's about it for me. Cool, thanks. So next one is Rod. Um, okay, sorry, I'm just trying, I'm hammering it out while I'm, yes, which is unfortunate because Eric, I didn't properly listen to what you were saying, but uh, I think it, I think you're covering what we've talked a lot about anyway. Um, so my week has all been specs, uh, sorry, schemas. Um, here's a, a basic list just from looking back over mainly the specs repo, which is telling me most of what I've been doing. Um, String join, string pairs, and list pairs, and now in JS, Go, and the specs. 
they were in the docs, but now they're, it's fully spec'd and it's in the implementations. Um, the ampersand link stuff is, all, is in all the implementations and the specs. We now have an any scaler in the specs to cover the sort of ampersand any. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Does it cover that? Uh, anyway, we're getting towards the idea of an any. We didn't quite get to any um, because it turns out to become more complicated than that, but uh, we're getting towards it. We have an any scaler for now. Um, by, pre by prefix representation for um, that was unions. Uh, we lifted that from the Filecoin specs and put it in JS and, and Go and the specs. And that's a um, that where you've got a union of different kinds of bytes. Uh, so you've got two, you know, you got two or three things that are of byte kind, but are named types. Um, you have you put them in a union with byte prefix, and you give them each an integer value. Then that that integer will differentiate between what the trailing bytes are. Uh, so that's in the specs JS and Go. Um, int representation for enums, again, lifted from Filecoin. That's still in spec process. Um, it, it is actually in, in, I think it's in the implementations already, uh, but it needs to be merged in the specs. Um, there was another thing in here. That you'd, yeah, that's right, advanced. <laughs> um, so the advanced data layout stuff, we boiled down last week to some syntax and then that's still in pull request in the specs repo. Um, Eric raised some interesting challenges with that yesterday with regard to... Uh, like thinking through the encryption use case and whether it even makes sense to have it as a rep representation and how these things compose together and unpack. And uh, that's, he left me with that thought as I was going to bed. So <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't fully, uh, I started writing something trying to figure out how that would look and uh, I could see some of the problems he was getting at. So we're going to need to figure that out this week because yeah, I, I didn't get any clear on that afterwards yeah. either so good luck to us both right but but that's sort of that's a bit of that's one of the big blockers right now it's getting that syntax merged so i'm actually wondering whether there's a, a short path here because I, I, I would really like to get to the point this week of um being able to validate the filecoin specs as uh with some minor changes to their syntax and the whole string keys thing, um, but if we can get those changes in, at, uh, you know, at least at least my branch with like the four pull requests or three pull requests, whatever it was, um, I'd like to be able to validate that. And the two things that are missing is the advanced layout syntax, which Michael also needs for Unix FS v two, so that's why it's a high priority. And then the other thing is the uh, they're using aliases. So type alias is where you, you know type foo bar. So you're saying foo is a type of bar. Uh, Eric and I were talking about that yesterday and how one might conceive of that through the whole um, sch uh, schema process. Um, but if those two, if we can figure those two things out, then that would satisfy the goal of being able to validate Filecoin specs with some other changes to them. Uh, that that would be a nice thing to get to this week. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, oh, and yeah, and I, I think, sorry. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say like the advanced layouts is the, the last thing that's blocking me actually. So, um, I mean, aliases like once they're in, I'll probably use them at some point in time, but there's actually like a lot of updates that I'll have to make to the, to my schema gen stuff once aliases land because right now and speaking to eric's kind of cardinality concept the encoder and decoder paths are basically the same because they they take decoded block data or data that you had you wanted to use to create a block and those are identical until you hit aliases in which case you need to know which way to flip things um but yeah so that's like the last thing that um, i would need 
So I was thinking about a fast path to that, which is because this, 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 these concerns that Eric raised yesterday are valid and does suggest that we need to think about this more carefully. Um, I was thinking that maybe what I could do is get a, get a form into the JS parser that conforms to what we agreed to last week with regard to advanced layout syntax. But every time you use it, it spits out a, a warning to standard error and says, this is, this is not necessarily going to be the final form, but it's usable. And then that would work for the file coin and your use case, but give us that out, which says we, we, we haven't, this is not in the specs yet. We haven't quite figured this one out, but it's usable to start playing with. It may change. <laughs> Uh, you're on mute, Michael. Sorry, yeah, I'm I'm totally okay with it changing later. That's fine. Yeah. And then that would give us some breathing room so we don't rush something through that we might end up regretting. Not that not that it's a big deal to change these things right now. We don't you know we're the only consumers of this stuff, so it's not so breaking changes are not the worst. But it'd be good to get this one right. Yeah, I guess. As far as breaking changes go, this seems like one of the less scary places to have it show up. It doesn't have a splash radius that's any bigger than itself, really. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think your idea to like print warnings, yeah, probably fine. Um, I should note that in here. Um, I'll go back to that when I'm after I'm speaking. Um, so the last thing was this pull request 192, which is a distillation of 180 and 184, I think they were. Um, so the hash map spec, the HAMP spec, uh, it currently encodes keys as bytes. So whether you provide string keys or byte keys in the interface, it will encode them onto the block as bytes. This proposal changes that to store it to, to storing a union of bytes or strings. So if you provide string keys in the implementation, it will store string keys. And if you provide bytes keys, it will store bytes. Um, now, according to our data, data model, if you use this as a data model replacement, like an advanced layout, uh, then you probably should only be using strings. But the implementation allows for bytes. There's no, it's bytes are in fact more efficient than strings because you don't have to convert them to do the hashing. Um, and there are, there are use cases for bytes. Um, so there was int int a lot of interesting discussion in 184 in particular, I think, um, that have led to this change being proposed. So I'd like to make progress on that, but I still wanted to get more information from some of the people that were talking about use cases. Uh, so that's that's all for now, I think. There's plenty more. It was a busy week last week for me, but um, I think that's all the notable stuff. Uh, Michael, you're next. Hey, um, yeah, so last week it was just more of the same, um, more progress on the MXC2 stuff, more progress on the schema gen that that is using. Um, the big change is that, um, so week before last, I had encoding working, and then I started on the reader. And the moment that I started on the reader, all of a sudden we didn't do multi-block, um, because when you're writing, you can think about a block at a time pretty easily, but when you're reading, you have to, or you can produce a block at a time, rather. Uh, but when you're reading, like especially reading through these schema-generated APIs, the whole point of them is that, is that you can define where the block boundaries are and then sort of like easily recurse through them. So doing that, like recursing through the unions in a fairly transparent way, that kind of stuff, um, worked on that. Um, have some pretty basic stuff working now on the reader side of it. Um, the initial sort of API generation stuff that I did was for a little messy, um, and it's gotten a little bit cleaned up, but it's now starting to show where it's really, really messy, um, and it'll probably need to be refactored a bit at some point. Um, yeah, and that's about it for me. All right. So, um, at the bottom, I see an agenda item. Um, if 
we are interested in thinking about using HackMD instead of Cripple. Um, I don't have a string, strong opinion on it. So um, whenever someone does a PR on the team management repository and points to some other pad, that's fine for me. <laughs> but yeah, so if anyone else has an opinion, It just takes forever for these crypt pads to open. And like, we don't really need them to be encrypted because it's not private, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's like, it's, yeah. I, I mean, we take it out and put it into the, yeah. I mean, we actually want to have it public, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like yeah. makes more sense to me, but. Yeah, that's fine for me. Um, all right. Um, What else is in there? Um, Do we want to talk about the utterly awesome idea of parsing Markdown and extracting schemas from it? <laughs> I don't know well, we, I, we don't actually. I'm flabbergasted by that because it's <laughs> insane, but also awesome. Like, clearly <laughs> awesome. Not yeah, I almost, I almost forgot about that because I wrote it in like two hours. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's well, we're not even really parsing Markdown. Like we're parsing the code blocks out of the Markdown. Like we never actually like even throw it into a Markdown parser because um, it's just unnecessary. Oh, okay. Like we do something very similar to what Volker posted with those aux scripts. It's just we we needed the um, the type of the, the the code block, so we ended up writing. I ended up running my own thing. And then Rod changed a bunch, so I don't even know what it, it looks like now. Yeah. But it's great. It actually, yeah. regex power level? Um, it's simpler than a regex. It's literally like a generator that like looks for the next index of the string. <laughs> Markdown is all UTF-8, so. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that makes it less. Rod, Rod, you're, you're right. muted, Rod, you're muted. <laughs> You're saying something awesome, I can tell. But. No, no, it was the, it, so yeah, Michael, Michael's initial version just stripped them out and, and then treated each block as a separate part. I, I, wrote, I rewrote it, so instead of doing that, it just, it took the markdown and then replaced everything that wasn't um, spec with blank lines. And then when you pass that through the parser, you get errors that tell you the line numbers saying, error parser oh. at this line in your markdown doc. So you, that's okay that's smart because because when you're doing the filecoin docs they're huge yeah. it's like okay you've got a, you know, a expected curly brace okay where <laughs> but now it says expected curly brace mm -hmm. at this line which is <laughs> sweet. see i had so i had been working with an, an older version of your schema parser for quite a while that didn't have line numbers so i was just kind of used to not getting just line numbers right. out of yeah. the schema and then you fix that, but then yeah, when I was pulling them out of the, the markdown, you weren't getting them. It's like line numbers. That's that's great though. So that's cool too. So that, that means that, that means that a whole markdown file then is getting parsed as one schema JSON, right? Rather than each block being its so individual one. Even even more than that. Um, so yes, that's true. But then if you do multiple markdown docs, it'll merge them into one schema. So for Filecoin, they've got oh. their schema split across a heap of docs. And now when you process them, it'll merge them all together. And if you've got duplicate types, it'll even warn you and say, sorry, there's an error here. We've duplicated it. And so okay. you have got this one thing. Okay. So but you're yeah. doing that on top of just like the throwing it into the parser, right? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. So yeah. Okay. wow, that's awesome. And then and there and now it works now because two schema is is well, there's a pull request anyway in the JavaScript parser. The two schema works with it too. So you run that across the Filecoin docs and it'll just spit out canonical form schemas for all of Filecoin, which is pretty sweet. And presumably code gen would also work for that. Cool. So I just want to mention that I spent some time on my on my org script so that basically every code block gets its own file. So this was the hard part of it. If I would have known that you only want a single file, that's like <laughs> It's super easy, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good to know. Um, yeah. <laughs> cool. Having fun with Auk. 
So we could also have a thumped tool that keeps carrying on with that same kind of idea, maybe, and it wouldn't be too crazy. Rewriting your markdown. Yeah, because it would not rewrite any of the markdown lines. It would just rewrite the code blocks. It would make Go programmers happy, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe that would still be a bit harder because, I don't know, the... Yeah, no, the tricky bit there is that you would lose your comments uh, unless we want to pull comments into metadata. I, I, I like the idea of comments being a thing that is encouraged in schemas. Yeah. Yeah, we do have some questions about that. So uh, sometimes, uh, Murad, you and I have been chatting about, like, how it would be simultaneously it seems useful but like also just incredibly frustrating to have both like a reified type implementation and like an AST type implementation. This is the common zone of one of those things that makes me wonder if having the separate AST one is actually a good idea so that stuff can be persisted there even though it wouldn't be in the reified ones. But I have mixed feelings about this so I'm just throwing that out there. I don't think we would want the comments to change the hash of the schema. So that also yeah. informs things that I don't, know. I don't know. But would it sometimes make sense that comments change the schema? So basically you have a new version, like a new version if you change some comments? I don't know. Well, I, it, I mean, it, it, they sh that, that's one of the nice things about having the JSON form is that it's this canonical thing that is that is. Your oh, oh, you're talking about the, the JSON thing. Oh, well, no, it's both. It's, it's it's in both. Although, I mean, Eric, here's another thing about that, which is the ordering. Um, I guess with JSON, that sort of helps. But that, that's something. This Go map ordering thing has been just crazy for making JSON. That is, yeah. Anyway, I'm let's look. looking forward to breaking out of that little sand trap. The sooner would be better. That is that has driven me slightly nuts every time I've bumped up against it in the last. Yeah, I've hit that repeatedly. It's annoying every time. We really want to get over it soon. Um, so Volker, on your question about HackMD, I, I, I don't care, maybe, maybe it's worth giving it a go just for a week at least to see if it's better, so let's set up for next week doing it and maybe you will like it. Yeah. I, I, will, I will click on any, any uh, pad that is in the readme of the team. Then. <laughs> cool. Um, is there anything else? They're awesome, go team. Okay, cool. Then <laughs> I close the IPLD sync meeting and say goodbye and stop the live stream and stop the recording.